Bibles. I, I'm going to give you a scripture. Miss Kim, it's not on my overhead. It's something that I went after yesterday out of the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. I'm sorry, it's not verse 1. Uh, uh, it's going to start with brothers and sisters. I forgot where I started that. So look for brothers and sisters and if you want to find it. But 1 Thessalonians, it's down near the end of the chapter. I should, I should have found that. My apology. I am a professional. Where, where is it? What verse? It starts with verse 13. Okay. That's what it was. I just didn't put the three. There. Now it's corrected. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I, I've, I've listened and listened and listened for, for many, many years about people talking about we're living in the last days. This is the last days. And, and, and they get caught up in the eschatology of the last days. Eschatology is a big word that just speaks to the last days. And because of that, I, I believe we have forgotten that we're living in our last days. For over 2,000 years, people have believed we're in the last days. But we're all in our last days. I mean, realize that. And it doesn't matter if Jesus does not show back up, amen, and come back through the clouds with the saints riding on a white horse, then what's it matter if you've not lived your last days? Now, I talked to a friend the other day, and, and I shocked him because I told him I did not want to go up into rapture. I, don't, I do not, Frank, want to be raptured. Because here's the deal. Everybody going to get raptured. Everybody's going to go up with the Lord. I want to die first. That's, this is just me. I want to die first, go down, then go up. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, right? And then according to the Scripture, those who are alive and remain with him are going to come back to snatch the rest of them and bring them back up. What I'm saying is I don't want to shortcut anything God has for me. And if I got raptured, then I'd miss out on death. Mm-hmm. See, I don't look at death as, as an ending to anything. I look at it as a transition, amen, to something else. So I look in Corinth, uh, Thessalonians here, and I see that Paul was dealing with it. And when you deal with it, I know some of you think, Pastor, that's just, I, I want out. You know why a lot of people want to be raptured? Because they're, they're tired of the trouble on earth. Do you know why people commit suicide? Because they're tired of the trouble on earth. And if you're not careful, you fall into a spiritual suicide to want to get out of here. Did you know heaven don't need you right now? The earth does. I don't care if you get quiet. I came here to offend you right off the bat, and then I'm going to offend the liberals later, later all right? So I'm just going to try to get everybody while I'm at it. So, but when you talk about the end time, the preacher has to be cautious. Many believe that they know how things are going to unfold, but really we all know in part and we prophesy in part. We've learned that prophecy is to foretell or to tell forth something. There are certain signs that Jesus spoke about concerning the last days. But one thing I know, whether... Whether it's last days or not, you're in your last days. And many of you, I've watched your days click off, just like you've watched mine click off. And we only have so many days left on this earth. So when I look at this scripture, if you, you found it with me, you see it on the overhead. Are you comfortable? It won't happen today. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death. So let's just break this down. Everybody say break it down. A lot of times people will read this and they'll, they'll say, well, this means that when you die, you stay in your body until Jesus comes again. That's known as soul sleep. Now, I'm going to teach you some stuff here. Maybe preach, teach, whatever you want, to, but I want you to catch it. Some people believe that when you die, you are in your body. Amen. So, therefore, they want to be buried in a body. They don't want to be cremated. They don't want to be pushed to sea. They don't want anything like that. Now, I'm not here to advocate any uh, what's going to happen to your earth suit after you die. But the bottom line is whether you are in that coffin, you're going to decay. If you're cremated, you're going to decay. If you're, if you're buried at sea, you're going to decay. It, no matter where you're at, your body is going to decay. It goes back to the earth from which it came. All right. So when I'm reading this, Paul say it, and, and it, it sounded a little, for some people, they thought this is what it meant, is we're going to stay here on this earth until Jesus comes. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what he also said. He said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. So when I'm looking at this, I'm telling you that when this, when this earth suit goes down, my spirit is going to be with him. Amen. And that's important. So that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind. Imagine the time when people didn't understand 
What happened after death? There was grieving. There was no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So in him. So wherever Jesus is, is wherever we will be. So if Jesus, of course, in heaven, so he's going to come back from heaven to earth. And I'm just going to break it down fast. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive and are left until the coming of the Lord will, re will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud shout, amen, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who, somebody said the dead in Christ will rise first. That means all the Baptists are going to get up. Amen. And I've often heard it said, why does the, the, the dead in Christ rise first? Well, if you go back and get your body, wherever it is, and you come up, you've got to have a little bit of a head start to catch everybody else up in the air together. It's common sense. Amen. Everybody follow me? After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will ever be with the Lord forever. Therefore, I want to encourage you with these. Now, here's the thing. There's historic and there's prophetic. And when I look at the Word of God, I see that sometimes that we look at things and we, we talk, I can talk to you about it historically. But I also believe some of this is prophetic. And when I read this, it has never been clear to me. The issue has never been us going up, but it's about him coming down. That he would come back to earth again another time. Amen. He's already came as a child. Amen. But he's coming back again. So the issue to me is, is that when we die, amen, we're going to be with him. And then when he comes back, we'll take everybody else. Now, again, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people are looking for an escape theology. They're trying to get off of the planet. They're trying to get out of here too quick. Heaven doesn't need you. Amen. I'm telling you, the earth needs you. Amen. You're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the, of the world. It's important that you stay here for a reason because there are people that need God and they need your witness in the earth. Can I get amen? So quit trying to get out of here too quick and, and pray, praying for the rapture. I hear it all the time. I'm not, and I'm not praying for death, but I pray I die before I get raptured. Because when I die, I'm going to get raptured. If you just get raptured, you never get to die. I know, that's, 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 you're not going to hear that preached anywhere else. <laughs> Amen. So, Father, I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you for an opportunity to question different things and, and to see where we're at today. And I thank you that we are living in our last days. Help us live them to the full in Jesus' name. Everyone shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you. may be seated. Let's talk about another historical or prophetical word. Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 24 that you'll know the signs of the end times. Amen. Go ahead, guys. Get this on the overhead for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Kim, I'm pushing you too fast. Amen, there it is. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So when I read this, I realize, and we're going to stay in Matthew 24 through the rest duration of this message. But when I read this, uh, God begins to lay out a blueprint. Now, historically, let me just tell you, a lot of this stuff has happened. But that doesn't mean because it's happened, it won't happen again. So he's saying, look for these signs when you see them. And understand that nation will rise against nation. The word nation is the word ethnos. It's a, a race, a tribe of people. The English word ethnicity comes from that. And notice, it does not say country against country, but that nation will rise against nation. And as we look at the, the blueprint, blueprint of the earth, we start seeing this happen, uh, happening again. A nation is a large group of people who share the same culture, language, and religion. One one of our problems that we're hearing about today, and, and I, I cannot convince the whole world of this, but I'm tired of hearing red, yellow, black, and white. What I want to hear is African, Anglo, Chinese, Italian. Do you understand you are defined by your culture? Amen. How you speak, what you look. It's not about your pigmentation. But we've made pigmentation to almost a God to the point where even this week I heard it advertised that many of us need to be less white. I cannot be less white because I am not white. I, I'm Anglo. I'm German. That's who I am. In, in, in order for me to be less white, does that make you more black? And I'm not here trying to spout or divide. 
But the issue is, this thing, there, there's an offense that has moving through the world, and people are raising up, and what's happening is we're starting to see nation against nation, even within our, within our, own, con- in our, our own country. Kingdom against, against kingdom. Kingdom is royalty, realm, or reign, through the notion of a foundation of power. Many of us don't talk about kingdoms because here in America, a kingdom tried to come over here, known as England, and rule this nation. We kicked them back to England, so we're a bunch of rebels, and we don't do kingdom thinking. But the bottom line is, the Bible is all about the kingdom of God. Amen. It's not so much about heaven as it is the kingdom. It's the king's domain. The Bible's about three things. And when you learn it, it opens the key to the Bible. Amen. It's about a king, his kids, and his kingdom. That's it. A king, his kids, and his kingdom. And when you understand it, you're part of the kingdom of God, that when, that thy, word, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy, on earth as it is in heaven, that God has this kingdom planned here on earth. That's why it's important to understand we're expanding the kingdom. The church is about expansion. It's about moving on. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, the kingdom of God. So whether we're here on earth or there in the kingdom of heaven, we're still a part of the kingdom. Amen. So when I look at kingdom, it has to do with wars between countries. Countries are self-governing political entities. Wars and rumors of wars. We're going to keep hearing about them. Then he said there'll be famines, a scarcity of food, desti- destitution, to be wanting or lacking. When you look at the, the whole pandemic of the world, you'll see that a third of the world is well fed. A third of the world is underfed, and a third of the world is starving. How many know where we live right now? We're in the overfed part of the world. Amen. There's nothing you can't get here. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. You bring somebody from another country into America and send them to buy a cereal, they'll go crazy down our food aisles. Because they are used to one cereal. They're not used to this, 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 or, or toothpaste and all the different things, uh, different opportunities to have. Then he talked about pestilence. Pestilence is a plague, a disease that will not go away. <laughs> so I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, God, I, I'm wondering if this COVID thing's ever going away. I mean, something that has killed one, uh, one and a half percent of everybody that's got it. Now, I, I may not be able to break all this down for you, but what, what do we got? 350 million people in America? And every, every night on the news, they announced that half a million people have died of COVID. Correct? And, and how many people in India? Over a billion people in India. How many people in India have gotten COVID? 11.1 million. How many died? 10.8 million. I mean, uh, how many uh, survived it? 10.8 million. How many died? 157,000. How does a third world country have 157,000 people that die of COVID and America's got a half a million? Follow the money. Follow the money. Look at it again. See it again. So we got pestilence, uh, uh, things that won't go away, all the, the, the flus, the epidemics, and all those things. Then earthquakes, a commotion, a tempest, or a gale of the air, or, or the ground to rock or to vibrate back and forth, to throw into fear or concern. This has to do with weather or any atmospheric condition. You know, the mudslides in California, the, the snow in the Midwest, the floods in the South, the airport shut down, people locked in homes last uh, a week and a half ago because of the weather, the freak storm that just hit Texas. When you start seeing this kind of stuff, that you know, it's been 120-something years since it's been that cold in Texas. That global warming beat us up last week. Amen. It just whooped us real good. And in the, the bottom line is, these still are signs of the times. Amen. Something's fixing to happen. And then Jesus said in verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrow. Sorrows, birth pains, or to sink or to go down. Matthew 24, verse 38. Now skipping down. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Now listen, first Jesus lays out that there are going to be wars and rumors of wars and nation against nation and, and countries against countries. There's going to be pestilence. There's going to be this, this, that, and the other. But on the other hand, there's going to be feasting. There's going to be people going through life as if nothing happened. This is why I'm telling you, you're living in your last days. Amen. What days you got left are your last days. And because of that, you got to back off and say, okay, as it was in the time of Noah. They didn't care. 
They had this apathetic, this arrogance about them. They were moving through life. And I look at our nation, and I say, God, I see people that, that act like none of this bothers them, that, that they just say Saran, they're just going on with life. You know, years ago, there was a movie called The Titanic, and, of course, I, I'm a little bit of a history buff. Amen. It was the number one selling movie of all time, and it depicted a ship that someone said, not even God himself could sink this ship. This ship reflected that period's extravagance and arrogance. When I look at America this year, I realize that everything is about to change. No matter how I voted, no matter how I voted, Amen. I could not change what happened. Amen. Lives are never going to be the same again. I've been confused by the hostility of family and friends. I look at people I have known all my life. They're so hate-filled with that, that they agree with opinions that would never express as their own. They would never admit that, that abortion is good, and yet they would vote that direction. And again, I'm not trying to get on how you voted. I'm just saying I don't understand, amen, calling good evil and evil good. You can't justify this insanity. It's like living in the twilight zone. we become a nation that's lost its collective mind. We see other countries going socialist and collapsing, but it seems like a great plan to some in D.C. Somehow it's un-American for the census to count how many Americans are in America. People who say there is no such thing as gender are demanding a female president. Just uh, last week, California produced a law that if you separated the male toys from the female toys, they'd fine you $1,000, amen, because all the genders need to be mixed because our three-year-olds need to decide if they're male or female. Now, you're laughing, but it's going to be the norm. Amen. When Hasbro declared they're no longer Mr. Potato Head, but Potato Head to keep from offending, you're laughing, but it's going to be the norm. Your kids are going to have to deal with this. Amen. And the next generation is coming up. It's amazing what you see in universities that advocate equality, discriminate against Asian Americans in favor of African Americans. Some people are held responsible for things that happened before they were born. And other people are not held responsible for what they are doing right now. Criminals are caught and released to hurt more people. But stopping them is bad because it's a violation of their rights. People who have never owned slaves should pay slavery rep uh, reparations to people who have never been slaves. After legislating gender, if a dude pretends to be a woman, you are required to pretend with him. I will, if you were, if, if you Pete standing up, I'm not going to call you a girl. Oh, it don't matter. Y'all ain't listening. People who have never been to college should pay the debts of college students who took out huge loans for their degrees. If I'd have known that, I'd sent my kids to school earlier. Immigrants and with tuberculosis and polio are welcome, but you'd better be able to prove your dog is vaccinated. Irish doctors and German engineers, South African police who want to immigrate to the U.S. must go through a rigorous vetting process, but any illiterate gangbanger who jumps a southern fence are welcome. $5 billion for border security is too expensive, but $1.5 trillion for free health care is not. If you cheat to get into college, you go to prison. But if you cheat to get into the country, you go to college for free. Pointing out all this makes me a hypocrite and a racist. That's where I stand today. Nothing makes sense anymore. No values, no morals, no civility. And people are dying of a Chinese virus. But it's racist for me to call it a Chinese virus. But yet, it comes from wherever it came from. Uh, West Nile virus. Where did it come from, Pastor? Uganda. The Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Colorado. Lyme disease. Discovered in Old Lyme, Connecticut. Ebola fever. Of Ebola River, Zaire, Africa. The Zika fever from the Zika forest in Uganda. German measles of the 18th century. These all came from a location. They called that. But if we call it that, now we are evidently uh, uh, hurt the NBA. We're clearly living in an upside-down world where right is wrong and, right, and wrong is right, where moral is immoral and more, immoral is moral. Where good is evil and evil is good. Where killing murders is wrong, but killing innocent babies is right. Wake up, America. Come on. Come on. Even wake up. Like that Titanic, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Proverbs 16, verse 18. 
It says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Britain at the time was sending missionaries all around the world. They brought great revival and reformation. It was Britain that gave the world one of its greatest spiritual gifts, the Word of God, amen, the Bible, the King James Version. The Titanic was a message from the Lord to Britain, calling her to repentance. Pride had replaced vision. They were resting more on what they had done than on what they had left to do. The Lord didn't sink the Titanic. Pride did. And it's amazing where America is right now when I see us sitting just like the Titanic, acting like there's no way that God's going to spank us. But I'm telling you, we're heading toward that decay of that day as it was in the days of Noah. Our arrogance has led us to this place. And the words that Jesus used to describe the end time, the sorrows, or the going, or the going down would be much like the days of Noah and the sinking of the Titanic. Matthew 24 verse 10 says, And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, amen, iniquity is the waxing over of one's soul, amen, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. You have so many days left here. You're living in your last days. It's one of the most prominent signs that we will see in our day. And look at this, offenses. That offenses will come. And, and I will tell you that it's important for me to point out, according to what I believe the Word of God, amen, Luke 17, 1 tells me that offenses are going to be the greatest thing. People are offended at you loving Jesus. People are offended that you say babies should, be, uh, should live. People are offended that you say that a man ought to be a man and a woman ought to be a woman and a masculinity is a good thing. People get offended with you at that and they will stand and oppose you at that. Luke 17, 1 says, Then said he unto his disciples, It's impossible that offenses will come. But woe unto him, through him they come. It would be better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck, and he cast into the sea, and that he should offend one of these little ones. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Now let's break this down. Let's leave the, na let's leave the world. Let's leave the nation. Let's leave the Texas. Let's get down to individuals. Him. If you offend somebody, how do I deal with the offenses in my life and being offended? The word offense is a sin or a crime, wrongdoing, creating resentment, anger, something that causes, amen, anger. In order for there to be an offense, there must be an offender. There must be somebody offended. The offender, it would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck. A millstone was used for grinding out the grain. A normal man could not move it. Jesus said it would be better to tie that around your neck and throw it in the sea if you offend one of these little ones. We should be careful not to offend. Amen. And this is my conundrum. You everybody understand the word conundrum? It's when I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. Amen. This is my conundrum. The things I've said are offensive to some. I know that. I knew it when I would say it. Here we find truth divides. I struggle to love people, but when their beliefs contradict the spirit of the word of God, you got to say something. Yeah. And this is where we're at. Because you look at the Bible and you got to ask yourself, okay, is this God's word, amen, or is it made up? And if you consider this God's word, you got, and it's not try. Sometimes I will listen to people say some of the most audacious and stupid stuff, and I have learned at 60 years of age that I cannot, argue them out of that opinion i smile at them i shake my head at them they think sometimes i agree with them but i just learned I, it ain't worth the offense for me to get on this bandwagon with you amen i'm not going to change your opinion right now but one thing i can do is stand on this book Amen. And for my own life look at it and say god help me amen help me to limit my liberty by my love Amen. Sometimes, you know what? You're a bonehead. As my pastor would say, big, dumb, stupid idiot. And yet, I love you. Amen. Because I love you, I'm going to limit my liberty. I'm not going to get all upset here and get all mad. It was, it was Romans. Paul says to us in chapter 14, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. In other words, maybe in this pulpit I'm going to say some things, but outside of here, I may not just attack everybody. on every, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. But there are things that just boggle my mind. But you can't have a bathroom where boys can walk in with girls. That, that, does, that does, to every daddy and grandpa in this house, raises your backbone up a little bit and says, I, that ain't right. Amen. You can't make that right in order to make you feel better about whether you get. Come on in the bathroom with us. We'll be nice to you. And therefore, 
one may edify another. For meat destroy not the work of God, or all things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby your brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Break it down, preacher. If I don't drink uh, alcohol, and those of you who know me know that, know that my family were bootleggers. I came from uh, alcoholics, or drunks, however you want to say it. But, but it's, it's be detriment for me to drink. So, therefore, when I'm around people who drink, you don't bother me. But the bottom line is, if I knew that H.D. struggles with drinking, and the truth of the matter is, I know he does because he bought whiskey from my grandma. Amen. So if I know that he struggled with drinking, and, and, I don't, and, and I get around him and he's quit, I don't offer him a beer. Because I'd make him stumble. Limit your liberty by your love. If I know you don't eat pork chops, I ain't going to offer you bacon. Amen. Are you following where I'm going? And so I've learned how to limit that. I don't have to listen to all kind of music that makes people stumble if, if it does that. Now, some folk got to grow up because bacon's good. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19, the offended, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. You ever offend somebody and watch the walls go up immediately? As soon as you said it, whoop, there goes walls. Amen. This might be one of the few sermons I've preached in a long time that while I'm preaching it, I watch walls come up and go down and up and down. You don't know. I mean, it's just like, where is that man going today? Amen. But the bottom line is when you offend somebody, the walls do come up. And how am I going to break it down? And then people get upset. They leave the house of God. They leave Jesus. Amen. They, they, they get offended about certain things. Luke 17, 3 says, Take heed to yourself. If your brother trespass against you, rebuke him. If he repent, forgive him. If he trespass against you seven times in a day, seven times in a day, turn unto him, saying, I, uh, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. In other words, Jesus is saying, don't allow somebody to lock you in the prison of unforgiveness. Amen. Make sure you learn how to release it. I watch, I see some of your social medias. I know how some people look toward forgiveness. Amen. But I'm telling you, you can't not allow things to hold you prison you got to learn to release everybody say release amen man is most like animal when he kills most like man when he judges but he's most like god when he forgives don't forget how much god has forgiven you don't forget how much god some of you've lived a long time you have a lot of stuff back in your closet don't forget how much god has forgiven you amen And when you do that don't be snide and upset because somebody crossed you learn how to let it go Amen. Learn how to forgive. Dealing with it, our response determines our future. How do you respond to the offense? Proverbs, Psalm, excuse me, Psalm 91, verse 3. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Offended people produce fruit such as envy, strife, anger, outrage, jealousy, envy. I, I said envy twice there. That's good. And hatred. Double envy. So look at it again. In your life, have you envied somebody else? Have you been strife? In other words, you've gone against anger. Anger wells up and you're around them. Outrage, jealousy, hatred. If so, then you're dealing with fruit of offense. So you've got to start dealing. Personally, you've got to start dealing with it. Look, I, I may be offended over what I see. I may never buy a potato head again. That's a hot subject. That's a hot potato right there. Amen. But, but the bottom line is it, it's not going to rock my world. It doesn't rock my world because somebody considers himself a boy or girl. It doesn't rock my world. Listen, this, this thing has been dealt with since the very beginning of time. Every culture has had to deal with this all the way up. You see, we just kind of opened the doors right now. Amen. So, but the bottom line is I need to be about my daddy's work. You know what matters to me? Getting people to Jesus and getting them to heaven. And then letting you figure it out. Let you figure out how you're going to live your life. But I just want to announce to you what's going on. The consequences of staying offended, of verbal attacks, insults, wounding others, division, separation, broken relationship, and usually backsliding. That's what happens when you stay offended. Everybody here has been offended. If you've not been, you've probably been this morning. Offenses are going to come. You're going to get offended. The progression of an offense, and then shall many be offended, shall betray one another. Matthew 24 again. Look at the last days. Yes, nation will rise against nation, country against country. There'll be pestilence. There'll be in the days of Noah. But listen to me. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. This is last day stuff. And what we've seen in our nation is people hating one another. Amen. Turn it against one another. I can disagree with you and not hate you. Say it again. I can disagree with you and not hate you just because I disagreed with you and your politics or your religion doesn't mean I hate you. 
Amen, it just means I'm right. <laughs> so there's the offense, there's the betrayal, there's the hatred. After the offense comes the betrayal. Betray to put in prison to lock someone out of your life. Lock them out. To detest, hate, detest by persecuting, to afflict constantly so as to distress or to annoy. You don't have to punch somebody and hit them to hate them. You, now we got social media. The result of hatred, 1 John 1, uh, excuse me, chapter 3, verse 15. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. The, last, the spirit of the last days is offense. Being offended by everything. Being upset by everything. I wish I knew less. I could be offended less. But it's all about that. Know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them. This is that conundrum. This is that. Hold on. What are you saying? Love, love my enemies. Amen. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Jesus, you set the bar so high. Oh, man, it, it, the offenses come individually in our lives in the last days. This is our days. And I don't want to spend my last days being offended with people. Don't want to do it. The preservation mode is this. After hatred, people enter, enter into a mode. Amen. Proverbs 18, 19, an offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city. And disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. I'm offended. I'm offended. An offended person refuses entry to anyone they feel can hurt them. They filter out anyone they think owes them, and they hold them out until they feel they have paid their debt. They open their life only to those who feel are on their side. Most of the time, they have offended people also. Without knowing, the walls of protection become prison walls. It's a false sense of self-preservation and protection. It keeps you from seeing your own character flaws because the blame is deferred to another. You know you are in this mode when you filter every relationship through past hurts, rejections, experiences with others. Offended. It's been the hardest year to pastor people. It started this time last year, second week of March, when the pandemic hit, the pandemonium. Having outdoor services at our campsite in New Caney in order to have church. It became hard not to offend people because I'm, I'm very, I'm not anti America, but I'm not real fond of our government. I saw this schism coming and this divide and this offense, and, and it seemed like if I, if I boistered myself too much, and people would say he's being arrogant. And all I want to do is have faith to overcome the fear that people were going through. And the pandemic was a fear. You know, it was fear of catching something. But as the year went on, I started seeing more bogus, more foolishness, more regulations, the lack of freedom. And I said, God... This is taking my life away. So I began to oppose it by living. You know, I rode 9,000 miles last year on my Harley. I, I got to get after it this year if I'm going to top that. But I went a lot of places. I was in North Carolina and Tennessee and Alabama, Mississippi. I was in New Mexico. I was in Colorado. I was in Arkansas and Oklahoma. Amen. I traveled and I, I saw what was going on in, with the people. My heart broke for people. And it really broke for the church because churches then if you remember last year they, they were police officers showing up in parking lots at churches and writing down tag numbers in order to turn people in all of a sudden brothers started turning against brothers sister against sister and offenses were rising and I said God we're not just in the last days we're in our last days amen it's been a hard because I, I don't want to be a, I, I don't want people to stay away from God because I offended them but yet I got to preach this book I got to stay with this book. Every single day is a risk. Every single day is a risk. A car accident, a flu, falling out of a tree. Amen. Every single day. Our days 
were numbered from the moment we took our first breath. Life isn't a race where we win against the inevitable. That has not changed since the beginning of time. But we should not be forced to live in fear. We went from being a free nation to being told uh, we couldn't go to school. We couldn't go to church. We couldn't go to grandma's house. We couldn't pay respect to loved ones through funerals. My heart is broken. The last few funerals that have happened with men in our church who have died, we've been unable to attend because they said the COVID was there. And I, I, I wanted to scream. I wanted to cuss. I wanted to fight I, I, inside me. Every, I love these men of God. And you're telling me we can't have a funeral for them? We can't honor their lives? Amen. We can't let people walk up and look at them one last time to get a little closer. Amen. When this thing broke loose, we couldn't pay our respect. We couldn't leave our homes. And then we were allowed to do those things. Hey, they told us how long we could be there, how far apart we have to be, which direction to walk, what to wear, where to stand, what we can buy, not to buy, what we could shop, not shop, whether we could sing, worship, take communion, what time we had to be home. Yes, our health matters. But you know what else matters? Family, friends, church, school, sporting events, amen, vacations, neighborhood barbecues, life, fitness, hugs, visiting the hospital. These things matter. One day, one day you're going to hug your grandma, your mom, your dad, your brother for the last time. One day your best friend will cry on your shoulder for the last time. One day your child will play their last football or cheer their last basketball game. One day they'll have their last day at school. And one day you'll spend your last day laughing with a loved one. One day you'll dance your last dance. Don't waste your days. You're living in your last days. Don't waste your days living in fear. Your time here on earth matters. Live your life. You have a chance here. God's going to call all of us home. I told somebody this week, there are two things that I know. Doesn't matter what happens. This too shall pass. Or I shall pass. Either way, I win. Amen? Hallelujah. Heads bowed for a moment. Father, I love you. I bless this congregation and those watching. I know some ways I, I shotgun preach today, Lord. I scatter a little here and a little there. But Lord, I thank you that, that with all this comes together and understanding this last days, it's about offense. Help us to individually live in such a way that things roll off our backs. That we see, that we don't mind calling a spade a spade and well, this is truth. Lord, it is a conundrum for your believers. You put us in a, a time between a rock and a hard place. Lord, I, the times I just like to say, Sarah, Sarah, and let things fly and just keep right on going. And other times I feel the Holy Spirit rising up in me and calling things that are wrong, wrong. So God, help us. Give us wisdom. God, we need it. As it was in the days of Noah, we're there now. Help our nation. Wipe America's dirty face. Give us another chance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Can you give God a praise in here. Amen, amen. Now, those watching online, if you don't mind looking for the opportunity to give this morning on holywild.net slash give amen we thank everybody for giving online that do that if you're giving here in the house amen the envelopes are in front of you unless you're on the front pew then you need to ask somebody behind you to hand you one amen so uh, appreciate all of your faithful giving i can't tell you how excited you if you hang out with me you know I, how excited i am about tuesday and wednesday night you know, Pastor Rick Hawkins has been my closest friend for about 35 plus years. Uh, he pastors a church outside of Norman, Oklahoma called Quest Church. And I, to have an opportunity to get him here to me is just because yeah, he's so sought after. But I'm excited about having him. And I'm going to invite the North Campus to come here Tuesday night and hopefully you to go to the North on Wednesday. I only get him for two nights. Now, the uniqueness of this is Rick has an older brother named Randy. Randy's about a year and a half, two years older than him. And when you talk, when you listen to him, he sounds like the bayou is burping out of his mouth. I mean, he just, he's pure Cajun, man. Everything he said just has that Cajun sound. But he's fixing to take a church, a cowboy church, south of Oklahoma City. It looks like that's going to happen. So the brothers will be pastoring up there together close by. Excited about that. But Randy's going to come down with Rick. So I, I have this uh, 
just this uh, reunion feeling. But you're going to love this guy's preaching. If you've never heard him, you're in for a blessing. If you've heard him, you already know. Amen. So be here. Make an accept Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Amen. We're going to try to start. We're trying to get this thing at 7 o'clock. Because of how life has been over the last year, each month when we do midweek, first week midweek, we're bringing someone special. Amen. We've had Doug Pittman. Who else did we bring in? I'm trying to remember that first one. Do you remember? Must not have been so special. <laughs> huh? Doug was the first one. But we've got Pastor Mike. He's going to try to be here next month. Uh, we got Eddie B coming in May. So we got a lot of things scheduled. But this one right here, I am so looking forward to Tuesday, Wednesday. David, if you come on up, maybe make the rest of these announcements. Guys, make sure you mark your calendar. We had to move Muscle Car Sunday back to September the 19th. We had conflict of schedule. I know some of you were taking vacation times. It's six months away. Hopefully you can get that changed and we can schedule it again September the 19th. September the 19th for Muscle Car Sunday. Amen. Uh, next week, we have March 7th, is going to be the TLCC Kids Noah's Ark Mission Trip. It's going to be a bake sale. Uh, if you guys want to donate stuff, bring stuff, buy stuff, all the above is needed. So make sure you bring money and cake next week so that you can buy your neighbor's cake and then they can buy yours, okay? And we're going to raise as much money as we can for the young people so they can get to Kentucky. Uh, March 13th is the Off-Road Misfits uh, meet and greet Saturday, March 13th, 9 a.m. Everyone welcome to attend Off-Road Vehicles um, or not. Hang out with some cool people, see some cool rides, bring a friend, coffee, donuts available while supplies last. Meet at the Crosby campus, see Mike for details. Mike, you got anything to say about that, Lucinda? Hmm? Good. Come hang out with some cool people, get some donuts. It's going to be a good time. Uh, let's see, March 14th, uh, 2021 is going to be Daylight Savings Time. So again, March the 14th will be Daylight Savings Time. Don't be late for church. That's what it says on here. Don't be late. Why you laugh? <laughs> Dana, Dana, Dana over there laughing. <laughs> Listen, Dana, that was for you, okay? No. I love this church. I love the fact that we get to be, you know, don't take offense, okay? Listen, let's, let's walk out the word today. Uh, you know, uh, the whole time pastor was preaching, the one thing that just kept coming and reverberating back to me, the easiest way to overcome offense is love. That's it. It says love covers a multitude of sins. He said in the end days, they will be offended and hate. Well, what's the opposite of hate? Love. If you don't want to be offended or you have been offended, listen, one, we have to forgive because if we want to be forgiven we have to forgive right that's pretty bible that's pretty simple it's as easy as it gets but at the end of the day man we just got to love one another love people for their differences love them for the fact that you know what i may not see things like you but the christ in me can still love the christ in you Amen. And that is the hope of glory. That is the hope that we're all living for. And so I just pray that all of us can just begin to love, just begin to overlook some of those, some of the silly things, some of the things that we don't agree with, some of the things that we don't understand. That's most of the time why we disagree with somebody we really don't understand. Right. They have one understanding. We have another. And then and we just got to find that common ground. And his name is Jesus. At the end of the day, if we can just do Jesus, we're going to make it. Amen. So let's just keep doing Jesus. And uh, anything else? Did I miss anybody? Sis is going to be meeting. Swap is going to be meeting. Uh, anything I need to know about that? Wasn't on here, so I just want to make sure. It's the 14th. Daylight saving time. So if you miss church, come to Swap. Okay? They'll be having church in the back. <laughs> Two or more will be on Tuesday. Not, not this Tuesday, though, right? Nope, not this Tuesday. Okay? But after that. There will be two or more. Um, and again, the prayer box is in the back. H is saying, look, put it in there. Let people know if you've been laid off, if you're looking for a job, any of those things. You need help with Bill, whatever. You know, we can't pray for it if we don't know. And, and, and listen, there is power in prayer. That's why we do it. That's what, there is power in prayer. And so let's continue to pray. Let's continue to lift up one another. Um, anything else? All right. Awesome. We done it.
We made it through another Sunday. Amen. Today we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates in return, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. I love you.